XL1, which is located 630 light years away from us. It resides in the constellation Northern Crown, at a distance of 1,030 light years in the constellation Andromeda, an exoplanet called WASP 1b has been located. All of these exoplanets are located far from the solar system, in completely different places and orbit around different stars. However, they have a lot in common that they belong to the class of exoplanets called hot Jupiters because they are all massive gas giants with. At first glance, there is a simple explanation for this as the star is forming. The intense energy and newly formed stellar wind tend to push lighter elements such as hydrogen and helium to the outer regions of the developing system, leaving behind only rocky material. Heavier elements are present, and there is a temptation to imagine that most stellar systems will follow a similar pattern. In its inner parts, there will be rocky worlds, and in its outer parts, there will be gas giants. However, you can see the difference between those distant stellar systems and our solar system. For most of the discovered exoplanetary systems, everything is not as it is with us. A gas exoplanet far from its star is quite unusual and more likely an exception than a norm. Our Jupiter is the largest planet in the system and the most mysterious and intriguing. Its mystery lies in its place of formation. One way to classify exoplanets is by the amount of energy they receive from their star. Hot worlds, such as Mercury and Venus, are too warm for life, while warm planets such as Earth and Mars may be habitable. Cold exoplanets, such as Jupiter and others, have limitations for a specific system and depend on the energy produced by the particular star. But this gives a good idea of the nearby, average, and distant exoplanets in our solar system. On distant exoplanets in our solar system, all gas planets are cold worlds, with a 100% occurrence rate. However, among all discovered and confirmed exoplanets, the situation is quite different. Less than 20% of gas worlds are cold, with hot Jupiters predominating. But how can exoplanets even be detected, since they are so far away and their parent stars shine very brightly? Currently, there are several methods of detection, but we will highlight two of them, the transit method and the Doppler method. With the transit method, the exoplanet passes in front of its star, partially blocking it and appearing smaller than its star. This is the most fruitful method in terms of the number of exoplanets discovered, with the Kepler Space Telescope being a leader in this type of discovery. The Doppler method involves detecting the wobble of a star caused by its exoplanet or planets as they orbit around their common center of mass. There are also limitations to this method, with two light planets having little effect on their star's movement, while heavy planets can be drowned out by the noise of their star. Other methods include the periodic pulsation method, the astrometric method, and direct observation of exoplanets. Each of these methods is far from perfect and has its own drawbacks. We can talk about this another time. But even if we take into account all the biases, it will turn out that hot Jupiters are much more common than cold ones. There are some ideas as to why this compression of cold worlds occurs in space. In a young star system, planets form inside a protoplanetary disk, which is mainly composed of gas and dust particles. The gas is partially ionized, so it interacts with the magnetic field of the central star. Due to collisions and clumping of dust within the disk, turbulence also arises. Physicists can describe such a system with the help of the discipline of magnetohydrodynamics. However, analyzing the equations of such a system is extremely difficult. But with the help of modern supercomputers, some general trends have been discovered. Low-mass planets do not significantly disrupt the overall structure of the protoplanetary disk. Their interaction with the disk creates a spiral density wave within the disk. One wave moves spirally inward in the leading direction of planet movement, and the other wave spirals outward on the trailing edges. Since the resistance of the outer spiral is usually greater than the resistance of the inner one, the planet will tend to move rapidly towards the star. 
This is known as the migration of first type planets for planets with a large mass, greater than 10 Earth masses, or slightly less than the masses of Uranus and Neptune. Not only is density wave induced, but the planet itself creates a gap in the protoplanetary disk. Please note the right part of the image. This means that although pure and internal resistance still exists, it is significantly less. Thus, during its formation, the planet will gradually move inward. This is known as the migration of type 2 planets. There is also a third type of planet migration, but it is not applicable to us now. Note that in both of these types, the final effect is that planets formed in the disk will tend to move towards the star, and thus, hot giants close to the star are commonplace. But then why did our Jupiter form so far from the Sun? According to the same computer model, Jupiter probably began to form where Mars is now located due to the resistance forces of the early solar system. It may have migrated towards the Sun, possibly within the modern orbits of Venus, and if not for Saturn's gravitational interaction, our big brother, the hot Jupiter, would have been. Two planets entered into a gravitational resonance in which Jupiter completed three orbits for every two of Saturn's. This resonance, two to three, gradually pushed both gas planets out into the outer part of the solar system. Subsequent interactions also pushed Uranus and Neptune outward. Jupiter's journey through the inner part of the solar system explains why there are no hot gas worlds there. Which also explains why we don't have super-Earths. Super-Earths are a class of rocky exoplanets with masses between 1 and 10 times that of Earth, but significantly smaller than gas giants. Such planets are very common in other star systems, but Jupiter's journey cleared all young super-Earths from the inner part of the solar system, not even giving them a chance to form. Our current rocky worlds, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, formed later and therefore turned out to be much smaller than super-Earths. That's why we've been looking for exoplanets with methods that can only detect large, massive worlds and often end up finding gas giants up to super-Earths. This is because they are easier to detect than planets the size of Mars or Mercury, which is why the statistics are overwhelmingly in their favor. There are still many exoplanets to be discovered and many amazing worlds to be found, so the methods will continue to improve. However, no statistic can negate the fact that gas giants are often much closer to their stars than giants in our solar system. Gas giants are often located much closer to their stars than the giants in our solar system. Recently, there have been many versions of the migration of Jupiter through the solar system, but today we will discuss the one that seems most logical to us based on observations of other stellar systems and their formation. However, if you disagree with this version, please write your own in the comments until our next interesting meeting.